Hello and welcome to E5 Hi, everyone. Super Cat Jab Tab Super Cat. Hmm. Super Tap? Super Chat? EFAP Super Cat. That'll be something someday. Super, super Chat Catch Up for episode 255. All the right, good old capped. Ultimate Quiz Game team uh, thing where we had to guess who were the most referenced individuals across like the internet, sort of. I forget what the exact uh, requirements were, well, but that was a fun of thing. On, uh, Wikipedia, right? I think so, I across a up. couple of different main Wikipedias. I don't think it was all of them. Mm -hmm. In any case, um, we're going we're gonna to answer some messages you guys have sent in while we were doing that. And, uh, I mean, you know, away we go, I suppose. A, uh, away we go. A big hi to Rags. Hi! Be careful, boys. Doing is now fine, according to YouTube. Doing is now fine? Like, sexual content? I don't think I believe you. Hmm. Doing is now fine? I don't know fine? what they mean. <laughs> uh, oh, maybe it's like hairstyling. Maybe. To give oneself a do, or another person a do. Uh, I support Grumbo because I like John. That's a fair reason to, to choose Team Grumbo. I think it was... Was, was it Team Grumbo or was we, that... We were Team Grumbo. That was oh, okay. uh, Theo, John, and I. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas. Look up The Unkindness oh, of Crows. It's a very well-written horror flick. Check it out. It's uh, currently the highest-funded British film on Kickstarter. Oh, cool. So, we're finally exposing crows. In a, I in thought a when they film. said, like, the unkindness of crows, it would be that uh, one of something that you see in nature is that crows will team up with wolves and fly over coyotes to show them where they are so that they can hunt them down. Because hmm. coyotes are the, uh, the underdogs of nature in the, in, the, in the true sense of that word. Basically, all of nature is out to get them. Except for, um... Except for uh, badgers, I think. I think coyotes can form semi-cooperative relationships with badgers. If you're a coyote, you're high enough to where you eat a lot of stuff, but you're not so high that other things won't also potentially eat you. Like, you're doing okay, but uh, you still have the, to watch out. Know, obviously, they don't have a good reputation among humans. Wolves have kind of had their reputations rehabilitated a bit, but coyotes are still quite disliked wolves will uh wolves are a lot bigger and stronger than coyotes yeah um yeah and, and coyotes on their own are not strong enough to take down large prey uh compared to wolves yeah and they eat the coyotes, little guys yeah i believe coyotes don't employ the same kind of um hack uh strategies that that wolves do that are so successful for them you gotta stick together you know mm-hmm I you think coyotes do, like, they can work together, but that they don't form the same kind of hyper-tight-knit social groups that uh, wolves do. All right. Hashtag Grumbo is besto. Hey. Mm. You know, I'm not taking sides <laughs> on this, okay? Farewell and yes. adieu to you massive... Ma I always fuck this up. Fair Fleemish massives, and then farewell and adieu to you massives of Fleem. Always got Ooh. little uh, notes next to it, as though a song. Beautiful, really. Uh, hi, Master. I wonder this... what song that's supposed to be. I'm sure it's referencing something that I should probably know, but I just don't recognize it for now. Uh, there is a great horror film from Fringolius Maximus's country, Redacted. I think they, they, we, we can say Australia. They, they've allowed that now. Uh, called, yeah, that's good. Called Lake Mungo. You fellas would love it. Lake Mungo? I I'm oh, aware I think I've of that. I think I almost had a chance to see it and I didn't, and I forgot then, so I'll. Try and get around to it. At maybe some point. we'll, maybe we'll have a floom park one day, and we'll just watch all the floompy movies. Mm. What with the wombo words? With the wombo words, the flame words. Have to make a make a list. Hey, Fringo, Ringo, Dingo, Bingo. What's your favorite film made in Australia? Uh, I usually Gallipoli, Peter Weir. Uh, that's a really great war film. Mel Gibson's in it. It's, uh, yeah, like, basically charts a story of, uh, two young men from Western Australia who then, uh, go to war, World War One, Gallipoli. Um, it's, yeah, it's, uh, and that'd be, and that'd be one, like, for people who aren't as familiar with, uh, Gallipoli is, is, like, that's, um, 
That's like an important battle uh, culturally for Australia. It was because uh, World War One was the first time that Australia fought under its own flag. Um, it's uh, like World War One. I, I wouldn't say World War One. I, I I think it would be safe to say is more culturally significant in Australia than World War Two. Whereas in America, it's kind of the other way around. World War Two is the more yeah. culturally significant one. In uh, Battlefield yeah, One, point. in the DLC, in one of the DLCs, I forget which one, but the uh, the the Aussies were a faction that you could. Did play they get added the eventually? Games. Yes, they did, and okay. they look uh, they look pretty snazzy. Yeah, because they had the uh, they had the the Anzac campaign uh, in in yeah for the campaign in the war stories, but I remember because I remember it was a conversation when the game came out because France and Russia weren't playable uh, factions. In multiplayer at launch, which everybody was kind of like, hmm, hmm. Weird. like it yeah, just it seems was... like a. It was strange that you would go with America before you would go with France and Russia as a. Which is weird because Battlefield One, because Battlefield Five launched the with the the two factions being uh, the Allied faction were the Brits. Uh, starting uh, the game started with the Brits and the Germans, but uh, yeah, eventually the, the uh, eventually they added in the. Uh, Japanese Empire and the United States. And sometimes the United States uh in some maps replaced uh Britain as far as I'm aware. I'm not sure, but I think eventually uh there would be maps where it would be America versus Germans. So I uh I but. feel like the, the whole idea of um any significance being attached to factions in multiplayer it was like with Call of Duty it started to decline after, you know, like, initially you would have, you know, maybe like four to six multiplayer factions, and then eventually it got boiled down to just two. And now it's kind of at the point where the factions don't really mean anything. Yeah, it's as, a shame, because uh, Battlefield like, uh, 1 actually place. had a lot. Um, the DLC added the... Uh, it, we, had, we got the French, we got not only the Russians, but two different factions of Russians, because of the Russian Civil War. We got right. the Australians, we got... The I think we got there was one naval there was naval variants of factions so they were technically the same countries but all of the units got a uh, sort of a redesign for the because it was all naval inspired um, so there was there there was not only excellent variety in Battlefield One for the amount of factions that were present which makes sense for World War One but also they looked really good and I think it's a high point for the series in terms of uh, how good the faction uh, units looked. Well, the reason why we got no factions anymore is because operators, specialists, oh, medics. Have our, uh, yeah, no more classes anymore. Now we just got like uh, you can play as Homelander now. Yeah, twenty forty two kind of tried to go back on that, but it it still is. They just sorted all the specialists into like classes, okay. so it was like a step in the right direction back to what things should be. But it's weird going around in a battlefield and it's just two groups of no pats who don't belong to countries who are just fighting for those country sides and it's just unique individuals that you see that have their own special abilities so that's it's it's weird to see uh hi i'm gay actor michael douglas here to promote jeff jennifer murphy's next big hit i i want to be a a i can't say that i could get banned a nice way to get around uh get around YouTube censorship. Good for you. Yeah, whatever you did, you know what? Look at you go. Uh the producers of Sonic Superstars and Mario Wonder have very similar names. This proves Saren is a traitor. Saren is hmm. a traitor. I mean, I, that doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> it will one day I, uh, when you play Mass Effect. I... I heard that that Sonic game was okay, the uh, Sonic Superstars, but it feels like Mario kind of uh, overshadowed it, as it does, typically, as a series in general. Fair enough. Uh, after three playthroughs of Sonic Superstars, this gay actor has only good things to say about it. Very solid title. $60 okay. is a bit much, granted, but it's still a great 2D Sonic game. Fair enough. I, I don't really play Sonic games, I'm sorry. Me neither. I think I the you only Sonic, Sonic game... Mania? What was Say that? what? Did you guys play Sonic Mania? No, I've no. Only played, like, I know a lot of people have contracted that, though, over the years. played Sonic 1, 
Sonic and Mario at the Olympics, or Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. Obviously, Sonic's participation in um, Smash, Brothers, Smash Brothers, then yeah. Generations and Colors. Sonic Mania was really great. That was a that was a really cool. It was like it was it was basically like a remix of a uh, classic Sonic with the uh, old sixteen bit art style, uh, new levels, really awesome music. Though Sonic is usually that's one thing that is. You know, for one of the most unreliable <laughs> video game series ever, uh, it is it is very reliable on the music side. Yeah, Sonic I still hear the music popping up here and there, music. you know, in video game music yeah. uh, people. Um, I will say the only Sonic... This, this is very strange, I guess, now that I think about it. The only Sonic game I've ever played is the original on the Sega Genesis? Genesis, right? yeah. It's the only one that I have played. Oh, uh, you should play. You should play like Sonic Two and Sonic and Knuckles. Those are those are really good. Maybe Usually I will. I would, I would generally recommend the two D ones and Generations. Generations is uh my favorite of the three D era Sonic games. Is 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 Hayden Christensen supposed to be like a shadow? Uh, we don't know yet. We don't know yet, but hopefully he's Shadow. Because that would actually be. Like that would be great. I, I would, I would be watch amazing. the three Sonic movies watch, in a row. I would just to, to see that. Yes, just to see that. Yeah, I, I want to really see this happen. Excited. I want Shadow, and I want him to be. I want him to be Anakin. I want. I want like you know he has an uneasy alliance with Knuckles or something, and then Knuckles brings in Sonic, and Shadow sees him, and they they have him deliver it as like you brought him here to kill me. Oh, I well, want I him mean, to do that. Wanna, I want him to remember, cheekily reference are... the prequels. If you want to um, if you want to be all caught up to date on uh Sonic, you got to make sure to watch the Knuckles uh spinoff show that's coming out in a couple of months. Fuck it. Oh, I had no idea there was one. We yeah, got to get caught look, up. You don't want to see it. A... I like Idris Elba as Knuckles. I like him as Knuckles. It's I've heard good things. You good know, I've, I've heard decent enough things about both of the movies to where I wouldn't mind watching them. I I I kind of like him. Uh, I I don't think they're great or anything, but uh, I I like him. Also, Rags, do you know how to mute Steam? <laughs> do you know how to like? I'm getting the oh, when the trailers bloop. play and then no, not even that. Like the you know the notification when someone messages you. That's fucking coming up, but I I'm looking. I for must because I must. Well, because I always had, had it like muted. Noises. I guess I updated. And now it's not muted anymore, and I'm like, fuck. Where's where's the sound for that? I I don't know. Uh, it would probably I don't know. It's in the settings somewhere, but to... I don't. I actually don't know. I will look during answers, all right? Sorry, people at home okay. are hearing blomp sounds. I'll try and... <laughs> <laughs> um, after three uh, playthroughs of... Oh, no, wait, I read that one, sorry. It, it isn't about winning, it's about having fun. May everyone have fun and a happy Halloween to all. Aw, not tonight. A lot of fun was had by all. We really enjoyed it. Yep. I certainly did. Uh, I'm really thankful that Sonic Team had little involvement in Superstars. It had to have helped a lot. You can tell by how much it has polish on it. What's Sonic Team's reputation oh. right now? Not good. Is that just the dev team that makes Sonic games? Yeah, they're the team that makes Sonic games. That's that's them. And yeah, their reputation ain't great as I understand it. I mean, I don't well. even play Sonic <laughs> games. I really know anything about them, but even I... Yeah. I don't know a whole lot about... I don't know a whole lot about uh, that. But yeah, I'm pretty sure their reputation ain't, ain't amazing. Uh, it's grumbling time. Fringy 2023. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if I said that when we were uh, playing. You should have, though. I think you did. Uh, yeah, I suppose you I should have. You almost certainly did, right? I don't know. I, I truly don't know. In my heart, you did. Um... Okay, that's... Chihuahuas are tragic. After generations of messed up breeding, their skulls are often too small for their brains, causing constant irritability and head aches. Poor buddies. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, it's um, terrible. Yeah, it's There's... uh, yeah, it's mind, not great uh... right when you you've just got breeds of dogs that are just unhealthy, like at base. You know, they are fundamentally unhealthy compared to other dog breeds. Yeah, that's where it goes uh, too far. Yeah. Um, y'all missed the piranha line in Source 6 as well as the downright slick line, more less sad. We didn't get everything, you know how it goes. We're all talking about how, how silly they are, I'm sorry, we did our best. 
It's kind of funny how that yes, works, right? Like, if we went through the Lord of the Rings and there was just no acknowledgement of, you know, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew, like, even though the, we cover, like, yeah, everything else, people people would feel that. just like, ooh, you didn't... <laughs> yeah. Hmm. All right, you well. fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you guys see Fringies in Spawn now? Sorry, but YouTube won't let me post the link. Uh, is that, like, a Green Plague Doctor in Spawn? Yeah, hopefully. Spawn. Cool. Oh, okay. One of the OG edgy anti-heroes. Yes. Uh, so well, in a timeline sense, I guess uh, Wolverine was a lot earlier than uh, than all of those guys from the 90s. I wonder, like, going through the history of it, was he always... Because he doesn't... If you were to tell me to list, uh, like, the edgy anti-hero-esque characters, I would have never... Uh, I guess I guess I Wolverine I doesn't come to mind. For that. I wouldn't call him like edgy in the more colloquial sense, but he was definitely designed to be more of a uh, sort of a rougher, gruffer kind of hero. Yeah, um, I get what you yeah, mean. To someone yeah. like Cyclops, for instance, he's definitely more uh, rough. But you don't yeah. you don't think of Wolverine as edgy in the same way that you think of Shadow the Hedgehog as edgy the hedgy. Caroline Efap ever best thriller movie high rags. Hello, um, it's on our personal watch list that we need to watch, but I have oh, not I seen have... it actually. Have you not seen Caroline? I have not. No, it's on it your personal out. watch list yeah. <laughs> then, because uh, I've seen it. Uh, da -da -da. Did you guys see Fringies in Spawn now? Oh, wait, I read that one. Superstars has good controls, level design, physics, music, visuals, etc. Oh, there you go. Superstars? The, the Sonic, Sonic game. Sonic, yeah. Oh, wasn't that, wasn't that the soccer game? The Mario soccer game? Wasn't that also called uh, Superstars? No, that's called Mario Strikers. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The new one was Battle League. Um, but, uh, maybe you're thinking of, like... Paper Mario must... Sticker Star or something. I think that sounds like a, a name of a Paper Mario game. I remember when uh, I didn't play Strikers much, I remember beating my brother all the time in that game because I would pass a lot and he did not pass. You I need to pass because passing was how you built up momentum in the ball and uh, when you built it up to get it to... Because... Uh, Mario Strikers Charged is really cool. It's uh, one of my favorite sports games. It was the one on Wii. And uh, that game was really fun. And decidedly, on the topic of edgy, it was a little bit edgy for a Mario game. It had electric fences around the, the field that when you hit the other players into them, they would get electrocuted. Um, it had, like, weapons uh, that would, like, be employed on the big explosives and everything. Uh, rock music in a Mario game. So it was a little bit edgy, but that game was great. And yeah, it's that was the winning strategy. Yeah. Yeah. You, had to, uh, you had to pass the ball, because if you pass the ball, you would build up... It's like you would build up momentum that was like stored in the ball and represented by a light. So once you got it to okay. the highest momentum, it would, it would go white. And if, you, if it was white, it just meant that when you went for a goal, you'd have a better chance of it actually getting through because it's moving way faster. So that was the key to winning in that game, was passing. I didn't even know about the momentum thing. I just was, just from a soccer perspective, passing is really important, and I would do it all the time. Well, it's part of the reason why that was in the game, is to, you know, there, was, a good way to, there was an yeah. effort to make it like, let's make it like football, but really uh, amp it up and make it kind of crazy and, and, and fun in a party game like uh, Mario Yeah, but does. make it, like, watchable and fun, yeah. Hey, look, all right, it's just because you don't like, it's the world's game, Rags. I enjoy playing it. I don't enjoy watching it. That's look. That's okay. Good that's for okay. You. He's allowed. Uh, like you mentioned netball earlier, and I have no idea what that is. You don't know what netball is. No, mm -hmm. maybe I do, and like it's called you, a different thing here. Do you not know what? Okay. Um, I don't know what netball is. Okay. Either. It's uh, it's 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 kind of like basketball. Uh, you know how it was of. known in my schools was girls basketball, basically. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's much more popular among, uh, girls and women than, uh, than men. I don't even, cause... It's like volleyball, yeah. but I really enjoy watching volleyball. Both of my sisters played volleyball when they were in high school, and we'd go see their games, and it was like, it was fun to watch. It was a, it's a neat sport to watch people play. Watching them go back and forth and back and forth and seeing who can get that opening and get it in. 
Unrelated to today's topic, checked out One Piece. It's no The Shootist, but I enjoyed it. It was great to see JXC's acting debut. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a while since this was sent, but One Piece has got a pretty good reputation now, the live-action adaptation. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll have to see how season two goes. Imagine Rags got Hitler wrong. No, I think you got that one pretty quickly, right? I did, yeah. yeah. I, I had to do it for the memes. Mm -hmm. And he was like 11 or 13, something like that. Yeah, he wasn't... He was pretty number high. One I figured anything, he'd be yeah. a... Good old no. Jesus was number one, right? Yeah, Jesus is no Hitler. That's for... I mean, Hitler is no Jesus. Uh, hashtag Grumbo Gang, hashtag Grumbo Wumbo, hashtag Grumbos, and hashtag Fleem Cringe. Right. Fleem Cringe? Not on, this, not on this podcast. We are the Chad Wojak. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, Frank with a C. I think someone was just recommending a... Uh name to try rags a while ago you mentioned some 900 dollar headphones you were thinking about buying can you remember what they were called i need some new ones no i i do not remember what they were i'd have to go digging around for some note or something on my phone to find out what they actually mm -hmm. yeah i i i'd have to even think i wrote it down somewhere it might be in my dms with actually yeah just give me just a second uh, let me grab all day. Uh, if number one is 100 points, then three is 98, not 97. Yeah, I, well, I both screwed that up and kept it relatively consistent, as in... Well, yeah, because any... as long as you did that for everything, then it doesn't matter. Well, so what I did was, if you guess number two correctly, you get 98 points. If you guess number 98 correctly, you get two points. However... That's... If you yeah. guess number one correctly, you get 100 points. And if you guess number 100, you got one point which yeah, doesn't yeah. actually match the rest, but those two could just be considered special. Because you get one yeah, point for exactly. 99 as well. So but, yeah. It remains relatively consistent. Yeah, it's fine. It doesn't ruin the game or anything. Um, this list is rigged. Well, I didn't rig it. <laughs> okay, it wasn't my fault. It was a matter of, uh, as we were going through it, kind of in real time, starting to realize, like, okay, I need to start thinking... Yeah. More along these lines than uh, what I, I think I was thinking entering into it right at the beginning. Um, I do have those headphones for you. For, the, for who asked uh, about it, or uh, Super Chat, or who asked. They are the, the Aeon 2 Noir. They are currently uh, $900. And I was also suggested that in addition to that, you get the... Um, da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm pulling up links here. You get a... He, he uses a K7 slash K7BT desktop DAC and amplifier. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned specifically to get HC12 dual push-pull uh, balanced headphone cables. HC12s. So he recommended these. He said these were the three things that he uses. Uh, the headphones, the DAC, and the cables and uh just using uh just using the headphones and a cable on his phone it sounded very 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 good so i might whenever these ath ag1x's finally start to wibble wobble or when i start getting back into you know like i am now finally starting to get into videos and stuff i will replace them because it's tough to really get a Shopping for headphones is difficult because, like, it's a sound, right? You can't really know the sound um, until you hear it. It's not something that you can... You, you, you kind of have to take people's word for it and know when people describe things, sort of what they're talking about. It's kind of like selling people... Um, it's like someone who's never had a really high refresh rate monitor selling someone higher frames per second when they don't really... Like, you can't really... That you literally can't show someone that unless they're they're kind of seeing it with their eyes. So you can only sort of describe what it is. And I think headphones and music is, it's kind of this, it's kind of similar in that way. So that's uh, hopefully that's a good answer to your question. And again, I don't own them myself. My friend does. He loves them. I tried them. I love them. So there you go. Uh, sweet crispy critters, Grumbo, pick it up. They did uh, pick it well, up. They won. <laughs> yeah, we did. It was a really 
Man, it, it, was it a just strange went back game. Yeah, it was a, uh, you never knew who was going to win. Yeah, because some fool might say, "Oh, Washington," and then it wouldn't be on the list. And then we... Why would oh, yeah, he be on the was, list that compared was, to Carter? I figured that out pretty early. Yeah, <laughs> I that was like wild. That Washington and Lincoln. It essentially became like a guessing game of name famous people <laughs> near the end. We're like, who's famous and not on this list? And then like Jimmy Carter would show up, and then we'd be like, "What?" Well, wasn't um <laughs> wasn't Che Guevara one of the ones that was mentioned as like yeah. wouldn't be on the list, and he was like one he of the last like the, ones. He was like the twenty something on the list. He, I think he it's was actually the last list. one. He ended up being super high on the list, but the only president I think was Jimmy Carter or something <laughs> like that. I think it was Jimmy Carter. Yeah. I'm late and confused. What are we going? Oh, it's it was it was easy to understand once you watch for just five minutes. I'm sure he was fully got it. Uh, rags in his head. Why does Muller always say hi to me? Probably his dementia making him forget I'm here. Poor guy. Also, hi me. We all have a little bit of dementia. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I guess just memory. Yeah. Sonic Superstars is a bad game. Ooh. Oh, shit. Oh, Damn. God. Gonna be now some fights over this. Play. Yeah. Oof. Woo. Muller, are you interested in the new Buffy audiobook called Slayers? Cordelia is the Slayer and got the most of the cast back to do voice acting. No. Um, yeah, I... <laughs> what, is that, like, is that alternate continuity, or... What, what, is, what is that? There's no point going into it, but just from what they've said, I'm already like, so they've... No. <laughs> like, I just already, just those factoids, I'm like, nope. I'm all right, thank you. I'm I'm glad that they they because I know the Anthony Stewart head and uh, James Mars just got to do work for it and stuff and it's like that's cool. Uh, I hope because I know that they both would have considered their respective characters to be some of their favorites across their whole career. So I'm glad they get to do more with them in whatever format. But when it comes to what I consider canon, it's it's the shows, the seasons, and then that's it, blocked off. Yeah. Remember, not... Patrick Stewart is in the Picard show, so. I can't pick and choose the comic stuff that I think is kind of neat versus the stuff that I think is hyper cringe, so I'd rather just block it out. I'm like, it's 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 the shows, the shows happened, and they were wonderful, and there they are. And same goes for making a audio drama this late uh, that changes a whole bunch of stuff, what seems to be arbitrarily. Um, though it got cancelled, I know that, and the theory is it got cancelled because... Disney don't want them to, consume, uh, to pursue a continuity line that's going to be completely irrelevant to their reboot of Buffy. Um, again, rumor. So Gary reckons that it's inevitable that Buffy gets rebooted. And that it probably it'll, is it'll, inevitable. It'll die on the vine, right? Like, it'll, it'll, it'll have a season, it'll be awful, and then all the power of the actual franchise returning will be gone by season two if they have one, and then it'll just be dead. As is the usual, but maybe, you know what, maybe it gets created in a new era where things aren't hyper cringe, they're only just Yeah, that's cringe. true. Maybe by nice. the time, you know, the stuff that comes out in years from now, it really will be a new era. Hmm. Fingers crossed, you can only hope, but, you yeah. know, if it takes a company this long to learn, then who knows. Get a damn calculator, long man. I shall do that next time. I thought I was going to be able to do it all in my head, but I, uh, I was not able. Was wrong. There's uh, there's one on their phone. They come with phones. I'll just you probably use the phone? computer one because it'll be right next to my notes as well. That's no uh, fun. You can't like tap the numbers like a real calculator. Eh. Yeah. I used a calculator the other day actually wow. to do some things. Is pretty pretty fun. Proud Picking up you. the old calculator, typing in some numbers. Hey, massives. Cool. What did you guys find to be the hardest, easiest, and your favorite EFAP anniversary episode if you have one? Also, Fringy Play, so. Wait. Oh, they're asking you to play Little Nightmares and High Rags. Hello. Hardest it's and easiest. It's tough. They all. Well, hardest for me is going to be easy because it was when we, I, I stayed up for 31 hours, which I think. Rags, didn't you do that with me? Yeah, I've been on all of them. No. Uh, I think the hardest. <laughs> you, one... you didn't stay up for the, uh, the first one. You stayed up for the. the... The first one I was on my own, I think, at the end. I was trying to oh, do. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, the second that was one. Was a while ago. I, I, I might not quite remember all of it. The second one we tried to, because it was the hundredth episode to outmax the previous year, which I think was twenty nine hours. And then I think we went slightly overboard of out maxing it as well, because we were talking to people. And I th so I think it was thirty one, which I think, just reasonably speaking, that would be considered the hardest one. 
Um, the hardest one for me, I think, was 150 because I only got like three hours of sleep before it started. Uh oh. And then the easiest. And you learned a valuable lesson. Uh, hmm. The easiest, I think, was the most recent one, actually. It did go pretty fast. We had everything ready to go. That was a very concentrated, like, we had video response, video response, video response. You know, it yeah. wasn't it wasn't as much of a uh, multi... Did we do a gothic phone on that one, or did we not? I... I... I, I Probably. I'm not sure, actually. I think we did we did trolley problem, I think, instead of gothic Oh, yeah. Phone. Ooh! Trolley fun. problem was good. <laughs> that was a fun one, yeah. Yeah. We love hypotheticals here at EFAP. Yep, we welcome oh, them. Oh, yeah. But I do agree, the last one, even though they kind of, like, not in a bad way, but it's tough for me to distinguish them on memory. That's just how my brain works, I guess. Yeah. Uh, like, I'll remember segments, but which segment was in which one is hard to remember. But I do recall the last one, I feel, was, was, was really easy. Like, by the time we got to the end, it didn't feel, you know, bad at all. I, I think I was just measuring it by how absolutely tired I was right at the end, and I think I was at my most tired. At yeah, the that's end a good way to measure it, yeah. Told Metal to make you guys play Outer Wilds. Do it. Perhaps in future. Someone has gifted me that, so I need to get around to playing it, too. Not to be confused with the Outer Worlds, which is a much different game. It's Fleem versus Grumbo. The War of Wumbo hath begun. As it has. And uh, behold my awesome 26-month milestone. Behold. I am beholding. I have beheld. Uh, it's their fault they didn't remember Washington. Let them sink. Wow. One team did indeed sink. That is what happened. Also, high rags. Hello! A shilling for the Fleam Supreme and a shilling for Grumbo Wumbo. Well, that's nice. Well, just use your phone to math. Oh, yeah, I, uh, I, I eventually did, I think. Um, it was just too much to juggle at the same time because I had to move images around. And then... Uh, Make sure I actually check my lists on whether people were guessing correctly or incorrectly, and then uh, make sure I remember the rules for each segment, and then, of course, doing the calculations. I uh, too much at once. I needed a secretary or a, an assistant, like Carol Vorderman on Countdown. I needed one of those. That's right. Maybe don't drink as much, though. This you is fun, but the acid is kicking in, and I promised myself I'd start Lord of the Rings Extended this weekend and got to finish House of Usher, too. Bly and Hill next. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, I mean, Hutcher was good stuff. I really enjoyed watching it. Mm. He was able to stick the landing. God forbid. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Thank you for giving we me were something. Worried. We were worried as fuck <laughs> with one episode are. to go. We were like, oh, God. Uh, Thank you for giving me something to look forward to after work tonight, Mr. Longman. No problem. Dev's favorite composer is Debussy. Oh, mm. you mean Claude Debussy? Oh, yes. I mean, Claude Debussy. Debussy, yeah. I'm probably not going to understand a word of this EFAP unless I start from the beginning, right? Anyways, you Dumbo should start at the beginning of DDLC. I think it was easy to jump into. You know, understanding yeah, it. I think so. A really fun EFAP, by the way. Thanks, team. No problem. We like I'm to keep you guys on your feet. I'm glad you enjoyed it, yeah. Some Good. cool new formats, fun yeah, stuff. You never know what's coming next. I just got here. Now, what in the Don's beautiful smile is going on here? What kind of wombology was used to create this? Moodle's beard? I'm confused. The magic I used weird. to come up with it is a secret. I'll never share. Uh, I would like to humbly request Fleem vs. Grumbo merch. <laughs> we found <laughs> the gold t-shirt. Uh, please don't make Jimmy Carter at EFAP meme. Let the poor bad rest in peanuts. It's uh, I think it, was, it wasn't as much a meme. It was just a funny thing that happened for a little bit. It was just surprising as all that the one US president on the list was Jimmy Carter. Yeah. The devs of the game admitted the Lord of Ring Gollum apology was written using AI. Absolutely pathetic and hilarious. Yep. That is pathetic. We have no <laughs> excuse for not being able to... The one thing that needed to be from the heart the most, and you had an AI just write something out. God, you the couldn't Lord have been of the fucked Rings to just write wrong. out a paragraph. Yeah, it's like you couldn't have even you didn't even double check it. Like fuck you people. I hope you almost you all think like what, what AI did you use that it fucked that up? Because that's the the meme a lot of people say is like oh this film was like written by AI and then people do the counter meme of like feel like an AI would do better than this and I'm like yeah a lot of the AI stuff it would get the Lord of the Rings correct wouldn't it? But apparently not. They must use the shitty one. 
Um, or someone actually did write it and they wrote it so bad they were like, uh, this was AI. <laughs> yeah. Blame it on the computer. <laughs> the computer was like, fuck you, man. This was you. Yeah, don't drag me into this. As a fellow history nerd, I'm happy to see Fringy and Theo be so good at this. Go Grumbo to the panel. Do you play RTS games like the Total War series or Paradox games? No. Every once in a while I'll play some StarCraft too, but that's really it. Not really uh, an RTS. Game. Age of Empires was my go-to for RTS. I yeah. haven't played so any in a while, though. I'd like them to make a resurgence. That would be cool. Yeah, uh, I feel like they're always kind of out there, but... yeah. You know, they're not well, a yeah, dominant Paradox genre. makes a lot of, uh, you know, Paradox is where you find a lot of strategy games. Um... Played a bit of, yeah, it's mostly for me, it was StarCraft, Brood War, StarCraft Two, some Supreme Commander, Forged Alliance, some of that. But, yeah, not really that much. Let's make a game of the Wings quote of the day, too. I'll give you three quotes, two real and one fake, which is fake. Mm. All right, so these are going to be three quotes. And, uh, okay. Since I have to read this, I'll know which one, so it'll have to be... I think we should let Rags go first, because Fringy's more likely yeah. to know which one's fake. Okay, um, sure. So, yeah, one Let's of these quotes is them. fake. Number one, I hate all the CIA lopping people do on me. Number two, why are people so interested in my pooping habits? Number three, I never gave that kid multiple enemas. Uh, I'm going to go with the pooping one. You think the poopy one is fake? I think, no, oh. Ooh, I thought it was one of them was real. Um, I think the third one is the fake one. All right, and uh, Fringy, what would your guess be? Pretty sure the first one is the fake one. That's pretty funny. <laughs> the fake one is number two. Oh! Is number two? <laughs> yes, so. <laughs> that one seems like, yeah. The real quotes are, I hate all the CIA lopping people do on me, and I never gave that kid multiple enemas. The fake quote is, why are people so interested in my pooping habits? I think it says a lot, mm. though, that people would believe that's a real one. Yeah, I mean... Because yeah, I, I, like, when I was reading it, I was like, that does sound like something it. he'd say, probably, yeah. But the first one to me felt real because people would be trying to find out stuff about him, and so he might imply CIA LARPing is what people are doing to try and mm -hmm. find out stuff about his life. And the last one just felt really out there in terms of how that would come up, but you never know, I guess. Yeah. Uh, hey guys, oh, thanks wow. again for all the hours of entertainment. This game was really fun. Also looking forward to the rest of Saw. You guys have a good one. Glad thanks. you enjoyed you it. you have a good one too. And yeah, for anybody listening who didn't know, we've done all the Saw movies, 1 through 10. They're all in the form of EFAP movies. You should go check them out. They're fun. Mm -hmm. Now, this one, it says, name the movie, and Fringy will be the fastest. But uh, 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 this one, me and Fringy will not be allowed. All right? It's a quote that's too obvious to us, so it'll have to be rags. The quote is, okay. keep the sand out of your weapons, keep those actions clear, we'll see you on the beach. Well, they're saving Private Ryan, right? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I was about to the say... The only one out of the three of us that may not yeah. get it instantly would be you. <laughs> and even then, even then it's, it's, it's literally one of the first lines in the film. I think it's also, there's context clues in that that could just, you get it. We'll see you on the beach, you know? Yeah. That's, uh, uh, that's a pretty clear indication. Well, weapons and beach, you're like, hmm. Yeah. Gotta keep the sand out of your action. What is the Very first true. film that you think of when it comes to weapons and a beach? Well, probably Saving Private Ryan. O oddly enough, it's Halo for me. But... Uh. Oh, you thinking about, uh, you thinking about um, Silent Cartographer? Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, maybe it's because I've, because of, of course, our, our season two watch through of Halo. I, I sort of have had a Halo on the mind, uh, on the brain, remembering the good old times. But there's always a little yeah. part of me that's thinking about Halo at any given moment. Like the Silent Cartographer feels like uh, a really good, you know, that opening advance on the beach feels like a good representation of why Halo is so fun. Uh, yeah, it's iconic. a good level. It's got a bit of everything. It's got big open areas. It's got smaller areas. It's got a little bit of vehicle traversal in there. Um, a little bit of backtracking, uh, but not mm -hmm. too much. So it, it, it's, it's got a lot of variety to it. All right. Whenever Star Wars does a thing, I picture the meme with Homelander sitting in the theater with a sour expression. But instead, it's George Lucas. Howdy, rags. Scritches for the good boy. Oh, thanks. Yeah, no, I don't imagine he's... Uh... You, you can't even pretend the idea that he likes the sequel trilogy George Lucas he must have been like holy shit they tanked Star Wars like because that's yep. what everyone thinks yeah 
Uh, hiya, folks. What lines do you think a villain has to cross to make a redemption arc virtually impossible to justify? Well, I think there's there's simply some crimes that a human being commit uh, can commit that where, especially by the nature of their mortality, they are just not going to have enough time to be able to uh, truly... Um, make up for it? I get, be able to make up for it, yeah. Um, there's also it's, a, it's a lot of... Those, there's a lot of subjectivity for this because a lot of people will be willing to forgive or not forgive based on personal experience, as in when they see a character do a thing that they've done and they're like, I really wish they can get back on track in the same vein of they're thinking about themselves. But then simultaneously, if a character does something to another character that someone did to you in real life that you didn't forgive for, you'll then be like, fuck that character. That character doesn't deserve forgiveness, that sort of thing. So like everyone's going to have different stuff, but I think we could all agree there's probably... Some stuff. <laughs> so. There, there is. Yeah, like I don't think. I mean, t Hitler is a good example, right? I, there's nothing Hitler could possibly do to truly redeem himself because he's done something that would require far beyond his mortal capabilities. Of, you know, just he doesn't have enough time, and I don't think he has enough capacity to, to come up with it. I, but if this this comes up with, um, uh, Parthenax in Skyrim, uh. He has essentially sequestered himself on a mountaintop for thousands of years, uh, and had you know, and helped humans defeat dragons from you know eight eons ago. He betrayed Alduin to help humans, and is teaching people the way of the voice. And he's become kind of a pacifist in a sense. And he, so he's kind of he's and, and because he's immortal, because he's a dragon, he actually has the physical ability to essentially exile himself for thousands of years in order to make up for the bad things that he did um, so long ago. Um, whereas it's just not going to be something that a human is going to be able to do. And yet we try and play with the uh, the limits in the form of something like a, a Winter Soldier or several other Darth fictional Vader. characters. Yeah, well, Darth Vader's an interesting one because the conversation never really had to happen in a complicated fashion because he died right after his... Uh, true, yeah. Uh, you know, redeeming actions, so we don't have to discuss what should happen to him next, or how people should feel about him necessarily, but people do try to broach that conversation, and I think it's fair. Um, it's fair to talk about, you know, what if Vader had survived? What if Luke brought him back? I don't think people would be happy to see him. I don't think people would be very happy to see him. Uh, I know you like Unbridled Topics being a secret, so can you at least say yes or no to the next one being one of the following? Flash, Indy 5, or Barbie? High ranks. Hello! The first part of what you said doesn't match the second part of what you said. You said, I know also, I like uh, it being a secret, and then you asked me to not to tell you. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's not, it's not, like, it's a semi-secret, but not really. If you narrow it down to three, it's not really a secret. Um, but also, we ended up doing all those anyway, so. Yeah, all those have had their cover. Well, except Bobby, we didn't really do that. Yeah, I guess not, yeah. yeah. We just talked about it, but. I mean, we've talked about it here and there, yeah. I don't think we've done, like, a video for it, though. Um. Victory for Grumbo. Go, go, Team Grumbo. Yeah, Team Grumbo did it. Good, 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 good job. We did it. Uh, Mihai Cheek sent me high. Begidius, Hill Subtleties, John Adams, the Spider Prophet, and Gay Pinto Walsh got shafted. Yeah, they should have been on the list, but you know it's not exactly accurate. We we noticed a lot of flaws with it. Gay Pinto Walsh is a new uh, philosopher, but he's still relevant, I think, and should have been on there. It is funny how you are naturally inclined to see the list as sort of in a similar vein as the Oscars, where like you want particular people to be on there as recognition of their influence, whatever. Yeah. But the, yeah. at the same time, the list is sitting there like, bro, I, I don't even like, <laughs> I don't have any like personal investment in who's coming in and who's coming out. It's just a weird algorithm. Uh, with this list on your minds, play Gothic Phone, please. We do need to play Gothic Phone at some point. We do. That's we're, right. we're uh, late on that. Did Jimmy Carter make the YouTube list? I don't think so, um, but maybe he should have. He's probably got some YouTube videos, right? He's still around, making houses and stuff. I think he. I think he. Yeah, I think, he's, I think he's. He's alive. nearly a hundred, right? Yeah. I think his wife has died recently, right? Oh. I don't know. But um, I think he Jimmy is Carter, still around. I think he's nearly. Jimmy Carter is 99 years old. He will turn 100 this year. Jeez. Damn. And yes, his wife passed away last year. Ah, uh, gotcha. 
Uh, Mubes release the Austin Powers fab. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. You'll get your damn comedy arc when you finish your damn war arc. Uh, that's, uh, you got that to look forward to. Now, we have Animal of the Day, the Red-Lipped Batfish. Is, uh, that sounds like an interesting combination of words. This guy. Oh, look at him. <laughs> wow, ready, ready for a night on the uh, town. A, uh, yeah. Hello. Ready to pick up some hot chicks. <laughs> it would be curious to know what the uh, evolutionary advantage is of that, those lips. But um, I suppose we can only assume. And the extinct animal of the day is the Kakops, the frog salamander crossover no one asked for except maybe Fringy. And there he is, what artist the... rendition. Oh my goodness! Wait, so is he? He's the big guy. Yeah, I think so. I it wouldn't be. God it wouldn't damn. be the most flattering illustration. What if he well, was actually if he was uh, the one getting, was getting eaten, got? Yeah. You know, if when did he? Uh, when did he exist? I do not know. Frog salamander, though, that's neat. Yeah. And that is the final massage for this selection. Oh, all right. Thank you guys so much for sending any messages for Ziquiz Game. Yeah, Hopefully you, you enjoyed it. And um, it will return at some point, maybe. Who knows? As do other weird arc different ones that we do every once in a while. Um, but for now, thank you all, and uh, goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. See you, everybody. Have Doodaloo. a good day.